Um, now I'd like to look at the groove object, um, which also, as we've discussed, uh, refers to the buffer object. So if I lock the patch and double click on the groove object with my sound 1 in it, you will notice that the uh, window comes up with the relevant sound within it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to get rid of this um, little engine here and we will look at the groove object. Now the groove object works differently from the play object insofar as um, whereas with the play object we send um, data from a line tilde object which tells it to play from a particular point in the file to another particular point in the file. Thus far we've been talking about 0 to the end of the file but it could be another um, it could be a portion of the file that we get it to play over a specific length of time as per how line object works. With the groove object what we have is or the, the way it works is to uh, be told how fast to read through a file and at what point it's to start reading through the file. So in that respect it's very much more like the SF play object in the way that it works. Um, so again with the SF play object, uh, let's just make one very quickly. You will remember that the right hand inlet um, is a speed input so you can tell it to, to play back at a particular speed i.e. one speed means at normal speed 0.5 would be half that speed, 2 would be twice that speed and so on. And then you send it a toggle message with a 1 or a 0 to tell it to start and stop. But you can also send it, um, although we haven't actually discussed this, you can also send it a seek message um, which tells it to start at a particular point in the file. Um, Groove works in a similar way to that. So what we will do is... Um, uh, Okay. We will send the outputs again to here. So we've got channel 1 and channel 2 outputs here. And then the right hand outlet is a loop sync output. We won't worry about that for the time being. We will connect that to there. Um, and we need some means of telling Groove to uh, play back at a particular speed. Now the two the middle and the right hand outlet, the right hand outlet we used in the SF play object to uh, specify the speed of playback uh, does, is not used for the same purpose in this. Here we've got uh, loop minimum and loop maximum. We'll come back to that very, very shortly. Um, but we obviously, th those obviously aren't the ways to make it, to make, you know, to specify speed. So instead we use this. SIG. SIG. Now SIG is an object which simply converts a a number from the um, control domain to the signal domain. Um, so if I were to uh, send in a, a number, um, which I might send in number one, and I connect a number tilde outlet, connect that to the outlet of SIG. When I send a number one to the SIG object, then it will the uh, the the signals that are coming out of the bottom of SIG is going to be constant ones. So it'll be 44,100 ones per second. And I can keep changing that. So if I send a, a float object there, then I, you'll notice that as I change this, then the number coming out of there changes. But remember that this is signal that's coming out of there. So what we'll do um, is we'll connect that to the inlet of groove. And you notice the inlet says sample playback uh, increment, uh, which is basically what we're sending. We're sending a signal which is, is going to do that. And you notice that as soon as I do that, the sound starts because it's being told to read back at that speed. Um, <clears throat> now, having got through there, SIG actually, well, the, the essentially Groove is still kind of playing, but it's reached the end of the sound file and it continues to, to go. Um, so what we might want now are some messages to tell it uh, where in the sound file to play back from and also a means of telling it to stop. Well, unlike um, the play, SF play object, we don't use a toggle to do that. We don't use on, off or one and zero messages to do that. To get it to start, we send a message which says where in the sound file we want it to start. 
So that might be at zero milliseconds. So again, this is not to be confused with how SF play works. Or we might send, you know, another value, say, I don't know, 500 milliseconds into the file. Actually, no, I'll make it slightly later than that. Uh, I'll make it three seconds into the file because it's quite a long file, this one. So that will tell it where to play back from. So again, if I press a zero, it'll play back from that point. And if I keep pressing it, it will go back to the beginning and play it again. Whereas 3000, I don't know whether this is going to be very obvious. You know, it's not at all obvious at all. Um, but it will play back from three seconds into the file. Um, <clears throat> maybe we'll try a different sound in a minute just to, just to, to, to uh, demonstrate that that's actually working. But in order to get it to stop playing, we send a message that says stop. So you will notice that when I start this playing, I can then stop it by means of a stop message. So that's the basic kind of playback and stop messages for Groove. Um, yeah, let's just cho choose a different sound just to make this a little bit clearer. Uh, let's choose a... <coughs> Um, desktop and Logic Beats again, and we'll choose our Logic Classic Rock Beat. So I can start from zero and stop that, or I can start from three, three seconds. So you notice that that's not starting from the same place, it's actually starting for three seconds into the file. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's uh, Groove, so why, why would you bother using that? Well there are um, a number of other things that Groove does, which are quite useful. Let's just check the time. Got a little bit more time. Um, well, we'll, we'll uh, move this over. Get rid of that. Because we can... Oh yes, I didn't demonstrate that. Um, you'll notice that this will you know, control the, the, the speed, as I say. I said I'd come back to these inlets later. Groove, signal, loop, min and loop max um, and what they do is they take some numbers and those numbers dictate loop points because you can specify where in that sound that's stored in buffer you want Groove to loop and you can send Groove a message to tell it to loop or not to loop um, to tell it to start looping you press loop 1 to tell it to stop looping you'd send loop 0 but as usual I'm going to make use of my dollar $1 and a toggle there and you'll hopefully remember from previous tutorials that this will if I turn this on loop mode will be turned on and if I turn it off loop mode will be turned off just as with the SF play object so we'll turn looping on and then I'll put in some numbers into the uh, the loop start and loop end points. So we'll put in, I don't know, 600 and uh, uh, 3000. <clears throat> so now it should loop. It will play back from the beginning. If I send a zero message, it will start playing back from uh, millisecond zero. It will play through to, mi to millisecond 3000, so three seconds into the file, and then it will loop back to 600 and then play through to 3000 and then jump back to 6000, run to 3000 again. So we'll try that. Now let's uh, slow down. There we go. Okay, so you can hear that happening. And of course we can change those loop points so I could make that loop shorter. So we can, we can specify the, the length of the loop that's happening there. I'm going to stop there and, and carry on another tutorial. <laughs> 